Suppose we need to determine modulus r and argument phi of the given complex numbers and we need to graph them. First, recall the general representation of the complex number. z equals x plus i times y, where x and y are real numbers. x and y can be considered as a rectangular coordinates. Therefore, a complex number z can be represented as a radius vector on the coordinate plane. For example, this is the radius vector representing complex number z with endpoint x, y. The modulus r of obtained radius vector is called the modulus of the complex number, and the angle phi between the positive direction of x-axis and the radius vector is called the argument of the complex number. Suppose we fully rotate radius vector around 0. Obviously, this is the same radius vector, but we have a new angle phi 1 which is equal to phi plus 2 pi. <clears throat> so we can conclude that complete rotation around the zero doesn't change the complex number, but we can obtain infinite number of values of arguments of the complex number by rotating radius vector clockwise or counterclockwise around the zero as many times as we like. To avoid this ambiguity, we commonly use the principal argument of the complex number. This is the value of argument inside of the half-closed interval from minus pi to pi. Now let's consider the first example. Here we have the complex number z equals 1 plus 3i. In this case, x equals 1 and y equals 3. So the end point of the radius vector representing this complex number is 1, 3. Now let's graph it. x equals 1 and y equals 3 over here. So this is the end point, 1, 3. And this is the radius vector representing complex number z with modulus r, and that's the angle phi. As we can see, we obtained the right angle triangle with legs x and y. From this triangle, we can calculate modulus r using Pythagorean theorem. r squared equals x squared plus y squared. In our case, this is 1 plus 9 and equals 10. Hence, r equals the square root of 10. Now let's find the argument of this complex number. From the same triangle, the tangent of the angle phi equals y over x. In our case, equals 3. As we can see, phi is an acute angle, Therefore, phi equals the inverse tangent of 3. This value is inside of this interval because phi is an acute angle. Therefore, this is the principal argument of z. Now, let's move on to the second example. In the second example, we have the following complex number. z equals 2 minus i. In this case, x equals 2 and y equals negative 1. So the terminal point of the radius vector representing this complex number is 2 comma negative 1. Let's grab this radius vector. This is 2. Here is negative 1. So this is the end point, 2 comma negative 1. This is radius vector representing complex number z with modulus r, and that's the angle phi. As we can see, we also obtained the right angle triangle with legs 2 and 1. So similarly to the first example, we can calculate r as follows r squared equals 2 squared plus 1 squared, and this is equal to 5. Hence, r equals the square root of 5. Now let's find the argument of this complex number. As we can see, phi is a reflex angle. 
Therefore, to make our calculations simpler, let's consider the exit angle to pi minus pi. From the same triangle, the tangent of this angle equals 1 over 2. Therefore, 2 pi minus pi equals the inverse tangent of 1 half. And pi equals 2 pi minus the inverse tangent of 1 half. This value is not inside of this interval, so we need to find the principal argument of z. As we know, complete rotation around 0 doesn't change the complex number, so now we need to drop off to pi from this expression. We get negative ten inverse tangent of 1 half, and this value is inside of this interval, so this is the principal argument of this complex number. Finally, let's proceed to our last example. In the third example, we have the following complex number, z equals negative 2i. In this case, x equals 0 and y equals negative 2. So the radius vector representing this complex number has an end point 0, negative 2. Let's see how it looks on the graph. x equals 0 and y equals negative 2 over here. So this is the endpoint 0, comma, negative 2. This is our radius vector representing complex number z with modulus r. And this is the angle phi. Obviously, the modulus r in this case equals 2. Also, we can see from the graph that phi equals 3 pi over 2. This value is not inside of this interval, so we still need to find the principal argument of z. As we know, complete rotation around the zero doesn't change the complex number. So let's subtract 2 pi from this expression and see what we get. 3 pi over 2 minus 2 pi equals negative pi over 2. This value is inside of this interval, so this is the principal argument of z. Now our task is complete, and that's the way we graphically represent complex numbers.